Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining me today. I am the Garden Goddess, and this is Planting Seeds, a series that I am revamping and resharing with the world um, to discuss the magic and the medicine aspects of these plant spirits. And so originally I created Planting Seeds to just showcase um the magical aspects that you can use these herbs as well as their medicinal properties and ways that you can use them um, to heal your body. But as I'm revamping um, planting seeds and I'm bringing this back to the collective, I really want to showcase not only the um, medicinal aspects and how you can use them, but I also want to showcase reverence for these particular herbs as well as talk about my relationship with them. And so today we'll be discussing one of my favorite herbs that I have been actually actively working with um, for a while in this season that I'm in, and that is Palo Santo. Now, Palo Santo is an herb that I like to call the herb of sacred work. Um, and it's one that garnered a lot of actually attention from the collective, I think almost 10 years ago, due to its beautiful, nourishing, heart-opening, welcoming just amazing nourishing aroma. And prior to Palo Santo, um, the spiritual community and the wellness community used a lot of white sage, which is something that many of you probably have. And then right after white sage, I believe Palo Santo started to make waves. And so before delving into the history and the medicine and the magic of Palo Santo, I first want to take a moment to give thanks to this plant spirit for giving so much of itself to the collective when it didn't have to. I want to thank Palo Santo for giving so much nourishment and so much love and so much of its warming and nourishing essence to the collective, even though it wasn't always acknowledged for its beauty and for its richness, and that it's still available to give, and it's still wanting and having that desire to give um, to the collective, even though it's on its way to being, I believe, um, extinguished, if not not um, nourished properly, we can, we can really uh, kill this herb if we're not careful, or at least make it less accessible to the collective if not careful. So I want to thank Palo Santo for its essence and for its gifts and for its powers and for its love that it is constantly and consistently giving to the world. So let's dive in to the medicine aspects of Palo Santo by first discussing its name. Now, Palo Santo is a name that translates into holy wood in Spanish. And it originated in the Centrals and South Americas of the world. And so it's located, I believe, a couple of the places that it's located in is uh, Ecuador as well as Peru. And so we know Palo Santo, especially I believe in the West, for its aroma and use uh, through incense and smoke. Normally, many of us uh, garner Palo Santo in its wood fashion, if you noticed it. I don't even have some on me today. But it's normally in like a small layer of wood and it's usually cut in layers of like two or three but you can use palo santo um, in tea form you can use palo santo as a resin as a powder and even ways that you can make your palo santo last longer is by getting the wood and shredding it shredding it and making it like uh, you know those pencil shreddings that we used to have like growing up as kids i don't know if people still use pencils number two pencils but I still do, um, shredding them and, and creating these uh, coils or even in small shreds will help your Palo Santo last longer. And it's something that I actually really, really encourage you to do. So um, Palo Santo was used for its ability to uh, bring in warm spirits for ritualistic purposes in indigenous cultures, but it has also been able to treat pain, stress, um, physical ailments such as colds, flu, anxiety, depression, asthma, bronchitis, um, as well as headaches and arthritis. You can get the oil, warm it up and put it on your joints to um, aid in and, and aid in joint relief and joint pain relief. And it also has um, anti-inflammatory properties. 
Another way that you could have used or you can use your Palo Santo is by creating a tea because it's a natural digestive aid. So it can be added as well as to, you know, ways you can consume it through your mouth, but you can also use it in soaps. You can also use it in scrubs. You can also use it in lotions, cleansers, moisturizers. It has a high concentration of a compound called delomining, which is thought to aid in preventing cancers. So how I discovered Palo Santo was about a little over 10 years ago. I believe I was really into the wellness community I have a bit, I was not into Western medicine growing up. And so I was always trying to find ways to heal the body from the inside out and create an environment for my body to thrive in. And so I went down the path of using white sage and then I don't know who I met or saw online, but eventually I discovered Palo Santo and I was able to obtain Palo Santo by going to a website called Shaman's Market, which is still available. And they are a beautiful business that believes in sourcing their herbs through um, respect, through responsibility, through having relationships with those, with those that are indigenous or those that have deep respect for the land that they're on they're the land that they're on and they're able to garner these um, spiritual tools, spiritual herbs, and so on and so forth. So I highly recommend Shaman's Market. They're not sponsoring, but hopefully one day they will uh, this video. And so when I discovered Palo Santo, it was actually in the very, very, very uh, beginning stages of my own spiritual journey before I even got into African spirituality I was on my own uh, spiritual journey and spiritual practice at a young age and so when I was able to obtain Palo Santo and I burned it for the first time I can remember being like this herb is not for play play I feel motivated to do things that bring me joy when I was burning on um, this particular uh, incense and it was the wood, it was a, I was burning it in the wood form. And I found myself just being so excited about this herb, it, but also feeling so protective of this herb because of what feelings that it gave me and what messages I was able to obtain through just burning this incense. And so I will only use it at the time whenever I was doing work that brought me joy and at a young age, I had started many different businesses. So I started like a lemonade business. I started a dog walking business. I started um, a clothing business, um, just things that I thought were fun. And that really made me feel alive. So anytime I was making my clothes, I was burning my Palo Santo and I would be in flow what it, with whatever my creative ideas were at the time. And so eventually I put this herb down and I never used it. I just didn't feel called to use it anymore until I got initiated into a traditional African religion. And through my years of working with Palo Santo and really studying it and really getting to know it. And even now I use it every day, every morning. It's a part of my uh, my sun rising devotion. I have found that this is an herb that is truly for sacred work, purposeful work, purposeful work, work that involves um, connecting your spirit with your body and, and sharing it. I really found that this herb is for is great for ancestral veneration. It's good for uh, body work, such as if you're someone that has um, a morning practice, such as qigong, yoga, um, meditation, um, even other different martial arts and, and dancing. This is a great herb to burn or to um incorporate within that routine because it's an herb that really believes in deep respect 
for the environment, deep respect for your internal environment, deep respect for your external environment. It's it's an herb that's really connected towards purpose. And it's an herb that's really connected towards connection. And so when you are in deep connection, when you're doing things that you love, when you're doing things that um, make you feel alive or make you feel connected to something bigger than yourself, that's when this herb really comes alive and it really thrives and it really optimizes its essence. And it's a beautiful herb, I think, to incorporate if you're someone that has really found their purpose in their journey. And it's definitely not an herb to be used willy-nilly. So if you're just cleaning your home and you're burning your Palo Santo, I don't think that's the best way to um, enjoy its, its aroma and enjoy its essence. But if you're doing things like what I'm doing today, which is teaching or getting up in the morning and showing reverence for your ancestral spirits or the earth, or even if you're gardening, I think this is a beautiful herb to incorporate into your routine. Now, if you're someone that feels like, I don't know my purpose, I don't know who I am, or you know, you're not even into ancestral veneration or practices, then this might not be the one that you can utilize in your um, daily practices or daily routine. I'll have other incense for you to burn. But if you're someone that's just getting started with your um, ancestral veneration regimen, I think this is a beautiful herb to incorporate in, in your routine and in your incense. If you're someone that's a practitioner, this is a wonderful herb to incorporate into your practice when you're giving readings online or when you're doing divinations for others in your um, intimate settings or even when you're doing retreats. This is a really beautiful herb to incorporate into your life and in your spiritual regimens. So I feel complete. And I hope you all enjoyed this video today. If you have any questions, if you just want to share your thoughts on Palo Santo and how you've experienced it, please comment, like, share. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Talk soon. All right. Bye-bye now.